Hey guys, welcome to my series on Beacon Pines. Now, I'm going to try this out as one of my Game Pass reviews, but um, I may also play this game all the way through. I guess we'll just have to see how I like it. Um, I don't know anything about this game. I saw it on Game Pass. It looked cute. So we're going to give it a try. Um, the description says it's a cute and creepy adventure game. So I'm pretty excited. Um, I can't wait to start. Now when I started the game, this is what popped up. So I just haven't done anything yet. And hopefully we'll be able to get into it. Okay, I got my lights turned down low. I'm ready for some creepy gameplay. And let's just roll, you know? Let's just get right into it. Let me make sure that I'm set up here for success. And hopefully we'll really enjoy it. Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. Interesting. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter 1. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. Oh, it looks so cute. Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Wow. Well. This is really cute. I really like it and it's so precious. Music is great. Can I see my face? Oh, it looks so cute. Look at me. What is he, a deer? It kind of has that sound like Animal Crossing. The little me, 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 me. He was six years old when he died, and it's six years later. So he's 12, starting middle school, seventh grade, I guess. So cute. What a crappy friend. His mom's missing, so his dad is dead. Mom's missing. We're walking with our friend. I can do the. Oh, he's. <laughs> he is. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> okay, I got a backpack. Let's take a look at that. Tickle. Wonderful. 
I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened that. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Okay, so I guess it's a charm. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Can I keep running the flowers? Yay. Bless you. Oh, what a cutie. Lolo looked to the side suspiciously. They might be watching? Who's that? Okay, so we're going to tell our grandmother where we are. Tell Gran before heading out with Rolo. Oh, okay, great. This is, I guess, where our objectives will be. I can jump. I don't know what these other buttons do yet. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Interesting. Some of them can be found in this very house. Ooh, something to find. Great. I love finding things. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. Did I take it? I didn't take it. I didn't take the stethoscope. I thought maybe it would take it. Yeah, let's just rest. Ponder. So that's another charm that we got for... <laughs> The way he slid off the cow, just so cute. Oh, I can do it again. Mm, yeah, just enjoy the fire, man. Just relax. You're so young. Oh, that is just too precious. Grand had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Understandable. If you have a grandmother and your the house isn't hot, is she even your grandmother? The water, I can turn on the water, that's nice. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Everybody's junk drawer. Junk. <laughs> the junk drawer. You you know, like that's one of those things that you have to have in your house. A junk drawer. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. That's nice. Meal prepping. Important. I guess I can't, oh. I guess I can't go that way. I guess I gotta go around. The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. That's another thing. Is this place, does this take place in the south? A hutch, warm house, junk drawer. Sounds like my grandmother. We well, yeah, have, my grandmother has a hutch like that. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Oh, that's not. I totally get that. You don't have to go in. We'll go in here. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Hide. Am I going to be able to hide in here? Well, I guess I can't go into it. Is this my bed? Summer, a chill still hung in the air. 
chill. He does look like he is just straight chilling. So, not in the south. That is a cute sweater, though, I must say. Look at how cute he is. Oh, God. Just precious. Graham's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. I don't blame you. I'd be annoyed, too. Graham's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Okay, so she's not up here, so let's go see if we can find her. Down the stairs. Um, I guess we haven't looked out the back. Oh, wait, I missed something. Ah. Just some dusty knickknacks. Okay, nothing important. So I guess we've got this door. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. A sturdy old wheelbarrow. Okay, so I'm going to have a turning point. Oh, there she is. I see her in the corner. She kind of blended in with the stuff there. So Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. I can hide behind this bush. Look, it's like I'm not even here. Beginner's Guide to Gardening laid open on the bench. Okay, let's tell her grand that we're going out with our friend Rolo here. Tell Gran, check. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. Accurate. We're gonna go chill. We were just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on truth. Easy. Bye. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicles. Ooh. Okay, so that's why. The Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Okay, so we can go back and see what the other options. Let's see if we said if we said hide. We were just going to go hide for the day. Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. All's well that ends well. Okay. So, I'm gonna, I guess. Okay, I guess we can stick with that for now. So do I still have my charm? I do. Okay, so I maybe I can use it again in the future. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> Our next objective is to get in trouble with Rolo. Let's get out of here, man. Bye, home. Goodbye, nice sofa. Okay, so I guess 
Oh, we're gonna run around. Okay, so let's go see where the. Oh, here he is. He runs fast. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. This game is so cute. Okay, let's go see what what's up with Rolo. Oh, look, other people. Oh yeah, go directly where the sign is going. Chapter two. Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. Dun dun dun! In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. So, is that our dad? Is Sharper Valentine our dad? Good six years. There's a festival going on. Can I talk to these people? I want to talk to everybody, but I'm supposed to go back. So I guess I'll come back here. Because I want to talk to these people. Well, let's just talk to them. Let's see what's going on. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. That guy looks sketch. Gosh dang right. That guy creeps me out, man. Who's this? Oh no, we're Van Horn, not Valentine. Augustus Valentine was not busy. He looks like <laughs> so stressed. Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Nice. Okay. Old Pickler's Pond. That's where we're going. We're going to the pond. Let's walk slowly so nobody sees us. Um. Oh, we lost the path. I guess it's back that way. Who's this? Hello. Who are you? Jetson. So that's our dad's chair, you know, and then... Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. That's nice. Oh, what a little... Oh, there's our dad. Look at how... Well, I can't say that we're smaller now. We, we're pretty small in general. So let's look at the box. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Um, I guess tickle? Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. Talk to her dad. Give it a good cast. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we gotta reel it in faster. Oh, so do I have to get more bait? I guess let's try jump. Tied a shoestring to what fish could resist a nice shoestring? Here we 
Here we go. I'm getting it. I got, I got, oh. My line snapped. So now I gotta do it again. Okay, let's try feather again. Okay, so once the line starts to turn shaky, I gotta slow it down. Oh, Doc! Amazing. Oh, so I, got, I should keep fishing? How many times do I gotta fish? Or can I go back? Okay, so I guess it's... Oh, I gotta do one of each. Okay, shoestring, let's go. Okay, I'm reeling it in, man. Let's go. A boot. I did it. I fished. Yeah, let's go find some more. So oh, what am I? Oh, that was nice. Okay, here we are. We're at the treehouse. The boys had a good thing going, as long as they kept old Jeff happy. They had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. Who's Jeff? I wonder. Oh, here we go. I made it inside. Oh yeah, look at me relaxing. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. How sad. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Could be, man. You don't know. Could be aliens. Wow, this is really peaceful music. Right? And a really peaceful game. Good to know Rolo has our back. Okay, well here we go. We're going to the old fertilizer plant. Decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. Oh, I could come up here. Luca looked up at the satellite dish. Rolo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. Cute. While it didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. Precious. Okay, let's go down. Which way are we going? Are we going this way? Nope. Are we going this way? This way? How do I get to the warehouse? I don't have a map. Oh, there he is. He's over there. Look at me. Pondering by the water. This guy's sleeping. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to the tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. Same.
Who are these people? Hello. <gasps> They're bullying that poor little Bonnie. <laughs> if I had a nickel, I'd be the king of nickels. A barrier. I got some garbage here. Who's this? Hello. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Who's that? Pete. Thoughts about what? Open to answering a few quick questions. One down. Question two. What's something I love about Beacon Pines? <laughs> and glanced up from the clipboard. Bye, Pete. Oh, so we're always gonna take a break. Wow, look, a little town hall. What does the sign say? Last Chance Diner is that way. Who's this guy? Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. News. change oh <laughs> so cute okay that was nice that guy's not bad in the beacon beacon can i go in these buildings i can't go in the town hall can i go in the beacon beacon i cannot go in the beacon beacon let's check out oh look at me oh <laughs> okay let's check out this lady who's this is it a stroller miss nelson No strange happenings. A dusty warehouse. Okay, thank you. Who's this? Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain. Miss Hatch. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. Interesting. Can I go this way? Whee! Oh, I can't. Oh, hello. Who's this? Piper. The early bird gets the proper education required for a successful and a fulfilling career later in life. I don't think that's the saying, but who's this? Zariel. Lumi. Zariel. If you never do what you don't love, you'll never work a day in your life. I can't go in this way. Bye. I'm just gonna skip down the stairs here. I'm gonna talk to these. Oh, can I go this way? I can go this way. Okay, hold on. One thing at a time. Let me talk to these girls over here. Oh. Roxy. Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. Is it? The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. 
And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Oh, so this must be Rolo's sister. There he is. Turn around. <laughs> Get in trouble for a love. Check. So cute. The turning point. What do we Rolo say? Froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. I can do that too. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with en enraged Roxy was to be a little, I guess, chill. In it's the, the past, only option. He found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. We just want to take it easy, Roxy. I'm gonna go by myself? Who's this girl? Investigate the Valentine Warehouse alone. How terrifying. So Fitz, look at him standing all cute with his eyeballs. <laughs> she just said no. Instant rejection. Nope. So I guess I'm supposed to go this way, but I kind of want to go this way. See what's around the corner here. Nothing to work. Oh. <laughs> slap the watermelon. <laughs> Can I slap it again? Oh, I can't slap it again. I just slapped it the one time. <laughs> Griffin, ice cream. Mr. Tolliver's not at the grocery stand. He's prepping for the festival. I wish I could slap the watermelon again. That was fun. Who's this? Bert. Look at him with his little lollipop. Wow, he knows a lot of stuff. There's <laughs> still only one road. Okay, bye. I guess I'm gonna go this way where I'm supposed to. A statue, Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. A bit much, if you ask me. Indulgent. Let's go. Oh, here we go. We're going this way. Solomon. I skipped it. No. <laughs> Can I? Luca knew that if he gave up now, he'd never hear the end of it from Roll. Oh, I can't go back. I have to keep moving forward. The library. The library's closed right now. I guess I gotta check back later. What's this? A boarded up building? Jack's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. How sad. Nun Creed's Drugstore. Deals, deals. 15 cents. I don't know what that says in the thing. New, new stock. A 
best friend regretted the second it was made. To dance with him? <laughs> Creepy. What a creep. Can you stop hitting on my grandmother, please? I'm trying to go investigate an old warehouse. The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. I was about to say, don't they all live in the same town? Okay, I can't go this way. I don't know what this building is. Maybe that's part of the drugstore. <gasps> Who's this? Joey! Hunting for bugs. If you're going into Weep Wood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. Is that the way we're going, or am I going this way? Can I go this way? Oh, I can, but I don't know where that goes. I think I'm supposed to go this direction. Slowly. Oh, goodness. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weep Wood. No turning back now. Oh, I'm just going. The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Luca often asked himself what Rolla would do so that he could rule out that option. Good call. Well, there's a hole here. I can't go through the hole. I guess... Oh, look. I picked something up. What was it? Flew from the fence. The light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Oh. I can't go this way? What's around this corner? I don't know. Okay, let's try to do this. How do I do this? Oh, there we go. One more to go. All right. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Okay, here we go. Oh, I made it through. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Interesting. There's only one way to find out. Oh god, I don't want to go by myself. Trash. Nothing over here. Do we go? This hose. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Interesting. Oh, I guess this is the liquid. I'm walking in it. Here we go. Investigate alone. Oh, Luke it's locked. He heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. Somebody's coming. <gasps> Zero two nine. <laughs> the heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about change. It wow. was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy, but don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. Wow, so that's From like out, 
A charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. That's the end of ending one. Okay, I guess let's go back to the rendezvous with Roxy. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Let's do it. Let's be a little shit. Did he hit her? Run. <laughs> Oh, I kicked it. I kicked her. <laughs> Investigate with Rolo. Okay, now I can read what he said. Solomon Valentine, current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune, huffed as he brushed off his pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What is everyone going to bring up on my mother? Like, aren't I sad about it? Shame. Just trying to figure it out. You rich kid? Snobby rich kid? Ain't it the truth? Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Accurate. Who's that? Is that his dad? Look at the way he walks. Solomon. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Oh, maybe that's his mom. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> Was she a greyhound? Bye, Solomon. See you later, Gator. I mean, dog. Oh, I have to talk to him again. Bye. <laughs> you won the race. Oh, my God. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn off the lights. I only have to turn off two because he turned off one. All right, let's go, man. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. They're excited. I would be excited too. Oh, rumble. <laughs> Stop jumping in the radioactive puddle. Mm -hmm. 
Throw him in the garbage. Anything in there? Let's see. A squishy bag of squish. So probably like waste. Are they phones? Walkie talkies. There's the guy in the suit. He didn't see them? What is that? Is that a body? Stop. They did not just throw a dead body on those kids. What is it? It's a name tag. <gasps> Who's not holding his hand? Oh my god, it's a dead body. A hand. Stop. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. Get me out of the dumpster. And running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. He can pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room, and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Wow. Chapter 3. Finding a friend. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. <laughs> So we got a deliver of jam. <gasps> Telephone. Some kind of redacted information. Um Graham's brow furrowed. But she she knows. let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. Oh 
I can't leave the house? Aww. Bye. Okay, so we're gonna stop here. <laughs> I really like this game. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm gonna take a break and, um, you know, probably play a little bit more in a little bit or in a couple days. Um, I hope you're enjoying this game <laughs> like I am. I just think it's so cute and so adorable and also like crazy, right? Um, dead body in a dumpster. Ugh, can't do it. Um, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Electronic sound floated in the air. Stop. No, I'm done. No, no, I'm done. Okay, let me pause. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop playing here and um, you know, we'll keep playing later. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked this game or enjoying my playthrough, um, please like um, or subscribe so you can get a notification for when I upload another one. I appreciate it, guys, so much. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys.